Hello and welcome to Just So Sherry. My name's Sherry and I'm Just So Sherry over on Instagram as well. So, this is going to be a strange beginning because this isn't another floss tube. This is a much asked after craft room tour. So, what I thought I would do is take you downstairs, show you where I stitch and what my stitchy setup's like and show you... Um, how I organise, <coughs> excuse me, my threads downstairs and then we'll bring you upstairs, we'll have a little look around my craft room um, and you'll see where I store my fabric and my threads and all of those, all the good stuff. And at the end, I've got a Just So Sherry for you, which involves this room. It's a, it's, it's a Koga. It is an absolute koga. One of the best. So if you can hang around till the end, you'll find out that one as well. Okay, let's go, let's go see. Okay, this is where I live, pretty much. Um, so I've been sitting stitching today and it occurred to me that I'll show you how I do my like how I sit and stitch basically. Well, not how to stitch, you all know how to stitch, I'm sure. Um, but what my setup is. Yeah, so I have got now this is a daylight. I think it's called a Magnificent Pro. I was recommended it from Facebook on YouTube. No, from Facebook on YouTube. Yeah, we're having a word this hard day. Um, I was recommended it on Facebook. I was asking for a mobile, something that I could change between the caravan and the house last year. And this was recommended because I've got a Lowry stand. But yeah, the less we talk about that, the better. So this works really well for me. And this undoes. Undoes? This un undoes. Yeah, you can undo it so you can carry like the bottom and the, the stalk. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, so you can carry it separately, which makes it a lot easier for me. With me back trouble. Um, I have got my tray that I got from Stitch in London. This. I've only had it, I've only used it for about a week. I do not know how I lived without one of these before. This is brilliant. So as I showed on my uh, floss tube the last time, the these things, stands, click in and it just sits and I can move it wherever, wherever I go. So I can literally just pick it up as well, a plaque. Um, so if I'm going upstairs to my bed, I just take it with this and I just sit it down. It is just the best thing ever for stitching tray. Right, I'm having to try and do everything one-handed because I'm I've got you on my phone. So we'll leave it there. So what I've got is my oat containers. I mean new one because that was getting a bit full. Um I've got my corner gauge. Here, these are 3.5 glasses, stitching glasses. These are me normal everyday very focals. So I'll take obviously a pair out of here and put my very focals down. I've got me highlighters for marking because that's obviously what we need. I've got one of these magnetic things. Um, so just looks much like an aerial, pulls out like an aerial and the bottom is magnetic. So it's brilliant for if things drop down the side of the settee or obviously any needles or what have you. Got me scissors and these are, let's see, my magnetic thing works. Now let me get my glasses on so I can see these. Pre-Max. Pre 
pretty max. Oh, won't focus. Come on, focus. Come on. Anyway, the pre max. Take my word for it. I've got two little stitching, uh, stitching tins, needle tins. This is my normal one, and I've got packets in here, so I tend to gravitate to the Bowen. I've got John James in there, small Bowen, and I've got DMC. And I've got a, uh, there's my magnetic thing doing its job again. And I've just got a needle minder on the top with needles that I've been using. And it works the other way because I've got me needle minder on the top. It makes the top of the, the tin magnetic so I can just stick that there. Or I can stick me glass, uh, me glasses, me scissors on. And this one has got my pony needles, so they're all colour coded. Actually, I'm lying, there's some other ones in there. Um, but the blacks are 24, the reds are 28, and it's blue for 26. And I love these because I can just instantly pull out the size I need. I know exactly what, what it, it was. I've got my trusty water bottle, of course. I've got my speaker. I can't get my finger in. This is my Bluetooth speaker because I listen to Audible a lot when I'm stitching. This is my a little bit of floss tube book where I jot down things that I want to mention. And also at the moment, I've been watching floss tube. It's my market list, as you can see. So I've got my pen on my list. I've got my project bag there. I've got me now I've just gotten I did have a lap stand where the hoop was attached to this but I've changed to one the, one of these ones just an Alba C1 um, because I've got loads of hoops and I wasn't able to use the hoops with my other stand so I've just invested in this so this pretty much comes everywhere with me I have got now this cushion is on here because it's generally where one of the cats sleep. Although Scout is supervising from the big chair. This shenanigans here, I could not live without my footstool. So this just moves depending on where I want to sit. So I could sit over there or sit over here. And it just, I don't know, it's nice to sit somewhere different. Excuse me, I've got a drink. This is called, this is called Knitter's Pride. It's basically a magnetic board. Now, I've turned the pattern over because I knew I was going to show it, so I didn't want to. So I've got all me smart and cool, what do you call them? Magnetic ties. Yes, magnetic ties. And they all just sit on there and I can put my pattern on or whatever, keep my scissors on. Um, and then when I need them for fabric, if I've got, you know, sort of a new piece of my hoop, I've got them there. Threads, which is what you need when you're stitching a hoop, because I was stitching on something different just before. I did have this little tray as me catch-all, but since I've got that bad boy, this is kind of redundant. There me work for a focal. You see the state of my table. Can you see what I do all day long? Me cups of tea. And um, it's really embarrassing, actually. I really should have cleaned, uh, yeah, should have cleaned it before. But this is real life, guys. I have got a coaster, but it's over there. So I don't know how that's got so bad, but anyway. So over here, I was talking the other day about me how I know if I've touched something or not. So over here I've got me DMC chest and we've got some threads that the cats have been helping me sort out which was very kind of them. And on this side of me chest I have the project I want to stitch on. So these are the ones I would like to get so I haven't done. That's me Stitch in London. I'd like to get some more done on that. 
Um, this is my new one that I've just kitted up with my special project bag that I got off the wonderful Rhonda. Um, so hopefully if I get some stitches in on that. And then once I've done something on it, it literally moves to that side. So these are the ones that I've already touched. So I know when I do my floss tubes, I just pick up whatever's in here and go upstairs. Spare hoops. This is my DMC card, but it's not a proper thread one, it's just a colour one. At some point I will invest in the thread one because I think it's a lot easier. But um, I'd rather spend my money on patterns. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Got me little cohort. Oh, and down here I've got me pearl cottons, me DMC pearl cotton. So I've got size 12 and size 8, depending on what I want to use them for. They normally sit on top of here, but I knew I wanted to open this and show you. So some more little tins just because I'm a tin freak. Um, and I love these little, these are Rendale tins. Um, and they're just lovely. And they've all got something inside as well. So, little rabbits in. So these are beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, the artwork is just... And they do cross-stitch patterns as well, I believe. So, yeah, and me little... Me little Kohana snips that I don't ever use because I just want to look at. Take that down. Okay, so... How do I go back a bit? Right, that's better. So, in the top, I've got what I call me sewing stuff. So, it's stuff... The actual sewing. So I've got like my proper pin cushion there. All my pins. More pins. Some needle threaders. What else have I got in here? I've rarely opened this. To oh, I've got some bone needles. I didn't know they were there. Oh, hiding. And what? 28. 28. 28. Loads of 28 bones. I'll keep them out because I'll put them with... And I didn't know I'd put these here either, Mill Hill. Who knows what project these are meant to be for? Hmm. Anyway, so, and they're all my actual, so if I was doing embroidery, I've got um, beading needles, I've got some chenille needles, I've got some actual hand sewing hemline needles. One of these. I haven't looked in this in ages, to be fair. Motion nail needles. So, and then inside the drawer, I've got what is hopefully, or it meant to be, a full master set of DMC. So, and I've got it in colour coordinated. So I've started with the whites and the blacks and the creams. It's really difficult to figure out what colour goes with what. So that peach one shouldn't be there for a starter. It should be over there. Um, and quite often I come in and I look and I think, why have I grouped that colour with that? Why isn't it with that colour? Like, So why isn't this one with like the yellowies? I don't know. But I've got more mustard ones. So anyway, I group them as best I can in colour families. And the orangies, the yellows. Pinks, cerises, down to the pale pinks, and my blues. I love my blues. I love my blues. And then we're moving into the, the violets and the lilac and the purple. And then this one, let's move these greens. We've discussed this. I'm not a green girl. But we need greens. We really need greens. But most of my patterns take greens. I love these colours. The turquoise and the teals. Absolutely love them. And in the bottom, I used to have all my pearl cottons, but I needed... Oh, God. I needed to move them. Because basically there was too much... Can you see how they get caught on the top? There's too many threads to squish them all just into four you really need to use the bottom drawer 
but I've got other stuff in the bottom drawer as well. So I've got these are me. There's some variegated under there, but I've started keeping all my spare whites, um, three tens, ecrus, whenever I'm near. Uh, um, oh gosh, oh, I'll sort that out in a minute. Whenever I'm near threads i usually pick up an extra white and ecru and a 310 because you just never know some metallic threads from dmc um let's see oh yeah diamond so they're me metallic threads there's a pearl cotton more metallic threads oh more white oh no that's brought out broader white I think I was going to do some white work that uh, tends to use the broader threads so this is where I moved the, the pearl cottons I moved these out of these two so that I could just get some more breathing space because they were getting caught and they were going all fluffy and I couldn't be used so I do need to reset it or resort it out and then we've got all the, the variegated ones here as well and they are just the, the variegated and the ones that turn into different colours as well, I think. Maybe. Yeah, that's like a, a one that goes into different colours. Yep. So that is my home set up. I'm chuffed with these. Didn't know I'd um, lost any. Well, not lost any, but misplaced any. Right, I'll be able to put these all these all sit up because I'm a bit obsessive and I get them all <laughs> sitting looking pretty, as you do. So, yeah, that's my stitching set up down home, down home, downstairs, and how I organise what I'm doing on a day or what I've done, what I've touched, how I know it. And quite often this moves that way or that way, depending on how many projects I've got either side, because sometimes it can get quite bulky depending on what I've been stitching on. Okay, so that's that one done. Thanks guys. So I hope you enjoyed seeing where I sit and stitch. Next, let's have a delve around here. Now, it is not a mill house, Charlie. It, it, it's not. And if I ever come back, if this reincarnation exists, I would like to come back and be a little borrower in Shelley's mill house. If you haven't seen the Antique Needle Workers mill house tour, go and watch it. I have no words. I have no words. It was done quite a long time ago. I think it was the second or the third video that Shelley made. Um, so you might have to go a little bit further back. Um, but it, it, it's worth it's worth it. So anyway, this is not a mill house. But you know what? It's my little space. Um, and I love it. And also, can I just say as well, it's taken me a decade to build up the stuff I've got. So, you know, it's been it's been a long time in the making. So let's go and have a little nosy. Let's see what is hiding behind the cupboard doors, behind the drawers. Let's go and have a look. Welcome to the Evaluation Centre for Disturbed Women. And in here, there is usually one very disturbed woman going about her daily business. So welcome to my world. Welcome to my craft room. My office, my place where I spend an awful lot of time. So I'll, this is the backdrop that you would normally see on my floss tubes. Um, so if I just do a quick pan round, I've got one of the Calyx units down there, some drawers. Big built-in cupboard, another one of the Calyx units. And then we have... This is the bit you don't normally see. So I've got like a wrap around desk, if you like. There's our Charlie. 
There's my big girl's pants because you never know when you need them to put on. In an emergency, you should always have some big girl's pants. So that is it in its entirety. So we'll have a little look <laughs> at what, what I've got going closer. What I've got going closer? Let's have a closer look at what I've got. The words were right, they were just in the wrong order. Okay, so this is my pegboard that I got from Ikea. And in here, these are all sliding pots. So these all slide out. Um, I'll see if I can get So in here is all my buttons. So I'll show you the, the pink ones to give you an idea. I've got beads. I've got focusing. It is focusing. It was just that I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> uh -huh. Welcome to Sherry's world. Okay, so in here I've got like normal, normal buttons. I've got hearts, I've got flowers, I've got wooden buttons. And there are some... can see there so I've got normal buttons as well as well as all the the fancy buttons and some some beads so they're all the same all the buttons have got pretty much the same type of stuff in they're just all in colours so this is I call it my Christmas Christmas tub, me sparkly, me red, me green, yellow, black and white, of course, Newcastle United. Got the browns and the creams, the reds, the greens, and of course my favourite, the blues. Um, further down here we go, I've got all my pencils, so different types of pencils for drawing and artwork. Fancied myself as a bit of an artist for a while. Um, this is my tool pot. Now these pots again are the same. They go come from IKEA, but they lift out, so it's probably better to show you. They do lift out quite easily when I've so they lift out. So these are like my Cricut pens, and I can just take them off the the board, take them to my desk, do what I do with them. And then bring them back and put them back on which is i make a lot harder than it actually is okay so and these are my tools things like um i've got what this is called create like round flowers with it I've got my bone folder and um, there's some binding book binding tools in here i believe and um, that's an all old poker whatever you want to call it Cricut pens, like I said, these are all my star buttons and, and just stars for different types of journaling and making junk journals. All my hearts um, are in here, so a little wooden hearts. And then we'll move up sort of to the charms. So up in here, I've got these are my angels. And an angel esque I've got in here. Um, wings, lots of wings, fairies, etc. Anything like that is in there. And then in this one is all my butterflies and things like I've just spotted the, if I can get a hold of it, my little rainbows. So mainly butterflies and rainbows in there. I used to use quite a lot of and then we'll move to the clips I've got clips and again they're all color coded so my brassy and silver ones pink and there's some orange and purple I think in there as well black and white is always needed and um, these are my frads and things like I call them light bulb pins I don't know what the proper name is for them um, 
So all my pins and, and rods are in there. And I have got all of these things that make holes in papers. In papers? In paper? I can't remember what you call it. But you put a hole puncher in and then you put the metal bit and glue clips. And then we come down. These are all my drawn ink pens. So my right microns um, and my favourite castells. Um, and that's, is that a friction? It is. So these are the pens, the friction pens by Pilot that you can write on fabric with them. And when you take an iron, you don't even need to iron it. You just need to take the iron to it and it heats the, like it melts it, melts it. Like it removes it, it removes the, the ink line. So that's specifically for fabric. I've got my glue tray here, and these are the glues I use more often, so I usually keep some of them out. So washi tape and a bit of a clip and a very probably old receipt on there. Um highlighters and my stablo, stablio, what are they called? Stablo pens. These are fab with these ones. And all my highlighters. And then me coloured pens, some of my microns, but they're all coloured. And I've got some <sighs> needle minders just stuck on here because where else would you keep them? And then down I've got some ribbons and just slotted on some some wire wire hooks. This is going to be a, a toughie because words are hard for me today. Um, actually, it's not the words, it's the names of things. I obviously don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I've got the ribbons. Now, all of this stuff on here, there's also things like this clip. These clips just slot in. These are all from Ikea. So they're all customed and fashioned to go with the, the pegboards. So that is it in its entirety. And that is the usual backdrop. On here, I've just got the Weeks Dye Works conversion to DMC. So if I haven't got a colour, I know what colour DMC I can exchange it for. Okay, down to the Calyx unit. And in this one, I have got, now I've had a bit of a change around, so I'm kind of getting used to where things are now. So these are my old junk journals, you can see there, 2018. And this is a junk journal, if you don't know what one is. It's a way of keeping a diary without writing reams of words. You just like stick and clag and draw and do whatever. I've got me Midori, which is another type of, of journal. And this is more of a, an art journal that I've kept. These are Halloween whips. So the ones that aren't, oh gosh, the ones that, ones that aren't active whips go in here. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, there's one with a, you can just see the, the front. It's the Salem Witch Trials. Who's it by? Is it stitches through the years? The little stitcher. My, it's by the little stitcher. So they're the Halloween whips that aren't active at the moment. Down here, we come to fabric. So in here, I've got fat quarters and these are all like cheapy ones that I got from the range. So I got like a pack of fat quarters with all the Halloween stuff on that were, I don't know, four or five quid. I mean, the, the material's not great, but it works for finishing fabrics and things because I'd be grudge using really nice fabric for finishing when most of it's going to be hidden behind the actual cross stitch. But then I have got some nicer fabrics here. So I got these from the Viking Loom. And these are much nicer, high, higher quality cotton. They're lovely and soft. Can't remember where I got these from. And then I've got some Tilda. I bought a whole load of Tilda. Um, I don't know what size they are. I think it's just a fat quarter. Um, from, it was Create and Craft a couple of years ago. I bought a whole load of Tilda stuff. Um, and I've just got it 
again sort of in colours if you like so these are the B stuff red that's that one in here this is all older bits of fabric that I've come across that I've thought might be nice to do something with so for example this one was a shirt that I found in the charity shop it's really lovely it's got a really lovely feel to it um, so I brought it home washed it cut it up and I will use it as finishing fabric or whatever so using it for so up in the cupboard I have got watercolour paper in here I do or I did quite a lot of watercolours I've also got photograph paper so I, I can print out photographs when I was making cards and things like that so that's in there in here are my Christmas whips that aren't active Christmas and winter so anything I'm working on not anything I'm working on anything well it is anything I'm working on but that's not an active whip so these are I've just started putting them away into seasonal um so that when it comes to Halloween I can just pull that thing out and know that they're all in there and I can just pick them out and put them into my active whip pile the same for the the Christmas ones so they're all in there in here is my paper and cardstock so I've got a lot of cardstock again from making cards junk journaling paper crafts tags all that sort of stuff and I've got my printer paper at the end here as well under here is more paper and cardstock this one is like shiny like silver and gold kind of um anything with a sheen on it this is just normal paper like normal cardstock that hasn't sort of got a sheen on it doesn't have anywhere else to go and these are all paper pads so for example paper pad whites vellum paper hobbycraft i should have hit shares in i was gonna say hairs in hobbycraft i should have shares in hobbycraft that's that one if we move over here what have i got under here oh this is a, a kind of a bit of a miscellaneous so these are I went through a phase of collecting notebooks just because I like notebooks, so I would buy lots of notebooks that you can see here. So these are all brand new notebooks that I've never used. This is a box of ribbons. So these are all ribbons I've come across that I will finish with. Was, again, I used to have an Etsy shop. And I sold junk journals and things like that. So I would make the junk journals and then sell them on. So I've got a lot of bits and pieces that go along with, with that. In here is all my actual paints, my watercolour paints um, and brushes. Oh, they fancy some of the, the um, travel brushes that I've never, never used because they're too nice. <laughs> What is it? We get this stuff and we don't use it because it's too nice to be used. And then here we come to some of the stitching stuff. Well, the patterns anyway. So these are, I would call me, medium mill hills. So I've got like my object circles. And they're all at the back there. They're what I would call the bigger, the bigger mill hills. And then there's a couple of similar sized patterns and I've got all my country cottage needlework and at the front I've got all my heart and hand so I've got all the, the wee birds the frills they're all in there and the centers that I've got and some JBW designs and these four at the front have been separated out because they are four of my 24 and 24 and these are the smaller Mill Hill kit, Mill Hill kits, I should say. So the beaded ones, charmed mitten, more beaded, and a couple of the, the sleighs in him. I love him. He's a lush little owl. This is my Canon printer. I love this thing. Apart from I still can't figure out how to scan and send documents by email in a file. I can do it kind of one by one, but yeah. So yeah, I definitely recommend Canon printer for 
a paper crafter without a doubt. That is a mixed media piece that I did. I just, and it's actually on just a bit of cardboard. I wanted to see how I could change something that was without using fancy materials. Um, and it worked out really well, so I kept it. This is my Cricut cup holder, so I can make cups, like printed cups. And in there is a little Cricut mini iron thing. Um, and that's the bigger iron thing for um, heat press, sorry, they're called. Yeah, get a red cherry. Heat press for making vinyl t-shirts, etc. And then these drawers, at the top I have got all of my charms. So there's Halloween charms in there. There's some more buttons, just in case I didn't have quite enough. I needed purple buttons, but I didn't have another one up there to put it on. So they sit in here. Um, I've got things like all the wooden spools. I've got some Tibetan charm things, wooden wooden balls, charms there, my keys and my scissors all in there, all the charms. More charms here, these are the under the sea kind of charms. And um, like that one was from, I got some stuff for the platinum jubilee. And the coronation. Uh, who knows, we might have another one soon. Um, I probably shouldn't say that. Um, these are my handmade with love that I used to stick everything on. Stick on everything, sorry, that I'd made. Halloween. More Halloween skulls and witches and, yeah, Halloween stuff. And then at the front here, there's lots of stuff that I've got from just bits and pieces. You've got, like, just another button company there. I've got some Halloween charms. That I've got a meat advent calendar, I think, from Megan Coffee Crafts. Of course, I've got some Christmas ornaments, Christmas baubles here, because I couldn't be bothered to put them up. In here is just bits that I didn't know what to put. So there's spare ink for my printer, there's a mill hill frame, and there's the, this is a shepherd's bush, I think. Is it shepherd's bush? Just another button company. I can't remember the designer. I think I thought it was Shepherd's Bush, but I could be wrong. I got it from Nimble Thimble. And here we come to the the good stuff, the fabric. So this is all my 36 count. And I've got it again, got it colour coded, kind of. Somehow, I don't know why that yellow was in the middle there randomly, but so this is all the 36 count that I have. And I keep it like this so that I can see at a glance what all the colours are. And yes, it's probably not the best way to keep it in terms of the actual fabric. But it is what it is. So, no, it's my primitive hair. So all of my 36 count is in there. In here, at the back there, is my watercolours stuff in here for when I just want to pick it up and go stick it in a backpack and away I go so these are me 32 counts and I've just separated these out because there was too many in one drawer and they were just packed jam tight and it wasn't it wasn't very healthy for the fabrics so again colour coded I'm trying to be colour coded I don't know, that goes there that goes there this is the thing, I changed my mind. When I talked about my DMC chest be before, I'll, one day I look at something and think, oh yeah, that's green, it goes with green. The next day I look at it and think, no, it's blue, it goes with blue. So yeah, this is what it is. So that's all me 32 count. And these are all linen, I think, pretty exclusively. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's all linen. And then in the bottom, more 32 count. So it's me whites and me lighter colors. Um, I love that. That was the random one I picked up at um, Nimble Thimble as well. Thornfield. I don't know who it's by though. And then at the end here I've got Evenweave. So these are the printed fabrics that I've got. That one's from Lauren, who's Cross Stitch Bunny. Um, and the rest are from Lakeside Needlecraft. 
for the even weave and the rest of the 32 counts. Up here, I've got my thank you cards. I know the card from my daughter. Um, a winter, not a winter, summer thing. It's an embroidery that I did, which I shouldn't have carried threads, as you can see. And on here, which I forgot to tell you, I've got my sampler button that I had to get from, where's my finger? There. Um, Stitch in London from Michelle. And again, you can see this on my backdrop when I'm on floss tube. So it's me stitching bird, me, what you call it, pin cushion that I made from Stitch in London and me spool from Cross Stitch Guild. And then here comes to my relatively active whips. So these, I've got all my Mirabilia patterns here. Then I've got me Quakers, me monthly Quakers that I still need to do, so May, June, and July. And they're all in order, so I can just pick the next one up and go. This is my kitted stuff for Strawberry Fields, which Rachel, Talking Dog Stitcher, did for me. And this is, funnily enough, um, my bag from Jess. These were all for my birthday. So I've got all my relatively active whips that, so you've seen downstairs, so anything I decide I want to work on, I'll take from here and it goes downstairs on the one side of the, the DMC chest. And then once I've actually touched it, it goes to the other side of the DMC chest. So this is semi-active whips. In other words, things I, I know I'm going to be working on in the next few months or want to work on in the next few months. In here is all my patterns. You might have seen me scoot back on my chair and grab patterns. So in here, I've got some books. Some This is probably one of the, this Joan Elliott cross stitch greetings cards. I have had this 20 years maybe. And it's probably one of the most loved pattern books I've ever had in my life. It's gorgeous. And it means I've always got something to stitch, um, something small to stitch, especially in times gone by where I had very little money to spend on stitching. Something like that is brilliant because you've always got, you can grab like a little piece of Ada, whatever, and you can always be stitching something. It doesn't have to be made to go on card. And then I've got everything in relatively, I've got them grouped into categories and then alphabetical. So... This first category up to this yellow marker paper. This is like my everyday patterns. So there's like the blackbirds at the beginning. I've got, oh, that's Mama Loves You, JB. So if I'm looking for something that starts with Teresa Cogat, maybe, I know I need to be down here. There we go, Teresa Cogat. And then I've got the smaller everyday patterns. And what I mean by smaller is just smaller size, like the plum streets and things. Then I've got a very small category of spring because I have very little spring. Then I move into Halloween. I've got no summer at all, really. I mean, I will have a few somewhere, but then we'll move into autumn. Sorry, there we go. So these are the autumn. And then we'll move into Halloween. And then I move into, what have I decided comes first? Winter. Because <clears throat> I think you can start. I don't know. Yes, I've decided winter comes first. I had this conversation last year and I think I decided Christmas came first. Like in the calendar. Anyway, never mind. I'll make it up as I go along. So winter... And then the final category, Christmas. And I just literally keep these pieces of card between them. They're just cheap, very lightweight cardstock, just so I can see where the categories. So I've got an idea of where to start and look when I'm on the hunt for something. More pictures of me and my daughter. This is a bit of a, uh, I'm not really sure what to do with cupboard. As I said, I've changed things around relatively recently. 
and put these books in here because they were in this shepherd. That this shepherd. <laughs> I've got shepherd's bush on the brain. Um, they were in this, and it was just getting too much, and I wanted all my patterns together, so I just took the books out and put them in here. I've got all my kitted patterns. Oh, it is that one. It's a shepherd's bush. That's the busy bees stitching tree. I was right. It is shepherd's bush. Um, but it goes with the buttons for is it was it just another button company i think so these are my kitted i've got my drawn threads kitted drawn threads my kitted that was cross stitch guild jane greenhalf um these have got things in that is what's that one that's a bothy threads yeah i'm sure that's a bothy threads one and that's another old whip as well. Very, very, very old whip. Um, and I don't know why that's in here. Because it should be over in the Halloween. Maybe there wasn't enough room. So more whips. But ones that aren't active. I've got all my watercolour brushes there. And then some frames that I bought from Lisa. And this last cupboard has just got... It's got more cardstock in here and paper. And then we'll move on to the Royal School of Needle work, Book of Embroidery, which I do use. I'd really recommend it. Um, the Ultimate Book of Cross Stitch was a couple of quid from a charity shop. Um, my Wild Swimming books, Show Me Where I Can Swim in the UK. And my clarinet and music, music books. Under here is stuff I have got. Well, there's my sewing machine. And it's things like I've got that's me crushed walnut shells or whatever it is that you call it. Stuff is under there. On to here. Ugh. I haven't done anything with this yet, but I found it in a charity shop for three quid. So I'm probably going to do some more upcycling with it. There's some spring stuff. Um, I think that's Plum Street, isn't it? That one, I think. And I know that one's Wild whilst Iris Naps. And then I've got another stitches through the years. And this has just got all my scissors, spare scissors in. And we've got the other stitches through the years. And that's my sawgrass printer. So I can sublimate with that printer, which I won't go into. That's a watercolour that I did, my metronome. Um just some witch's poison bottles because we always need them handy in here is my draw of doom we've seen in here so this is the the um where all the the fully finishes go never to be seen again the draw of doom so yeah and i've also got my giveaways on top this is where we'll come to some of the sewing stuff. So I've got some floss drops there that I've got from Jess Keep Stitching. Got some Rick Rack, some beads to make some counting pins with that I bought from Hobbycraft. Some needle minders and floss drops. And here is where I've got my 3705 Gimbals on bobbins. And I like a tin. I really like a tin. It's a running theme, isn't it? I love a tin. Stickers and random bits of things like this that I can stick on bunnies. Stuff. This is a drawer of stuff. So that's me ink and cartridge pen. There's some Cricut vinyl on there. Um, and then there's just some finishing stuff basically that I've picked up along my travels and thought I can do something with that at some point. In here is my mount board. Under there is my paper trimmers. In here is my things I grab. So my tape measure, scissors, rulers, anything that I'm sitting at my desk and I think I'm going to need to grab is in there. And this is my second set of DMC and this is all bobbinated as you can see. So obviously the, the other tin is there with the higher um, numbers so the theory is I've got a full set downstairs 
when I run out of a bobbin, I'll go downstairs, get the one out of the, the thing and then backfill in the DMC chair so that I've always got a full set. That doesn't work in practice because obviously, as you can see, half the stuff from here is in kits. I did look at trying to keep a spreadsheet. That didn't work very well either. This is my draw of stuff. Threads, silk threads, mainly silk threads, threads that have been sent for stuff. So where I've ordered all the threads to go with something. So that's your cinnamon stars. And what's this one? Oh, the light of winter. Putty has gone to Thistle House for its holidays. So I found a putty. You'll all be pleased to hear. So I can get this house finished. All my buttons and pins. Nine more, nine more threads, nine more threads. Invisible beading threads. And some more, some more pins. I'm doing need to sort this out a little bit more and I'm busy trying to work out the best way to do it. And here is all my glue, all different types of glue. And here is another drawer of stuff, finishing stuff. And my super professional microphone. Um, and that's my mobile, mobile hot glue gun. Cordless, that's the word. Cordless hot glue gun. And then in the bottom here, I've got beads. Beads, beads. I've got sequins. I've got those other things that you stick in, but these are fancy ones for making holes that you put in. I can't remember. I'll need to remember. This is my crocodile. Crocodile, sorry. So this is what makes them. You, you put one on one side and you squish it together and that's how you make a, a metal ringed hole, basically. Small papers, beads. Oh. We've got Charlie and this is Charlie trying to hide from us. Saying, Auntie Sherry, man, shut up. So Charlie comes up and lives with me when I'm at work. So this is my desk. That's my, my Mac that I do my filming on. That is my work computer. Now you know why it's hidden. Very, very, very hidden. I've got my cricket. I've got my office chair and my big girl's pants, which now appear to be living there. Um, candy, the springer that I did. On there, I've got a whole load of ribbons. More ribbons, more ribbons. I've got lots of ribbons. And we've got more charms and more fabric. So in here, there's like filigree things that I can do. A corner. The like trees and anything nature related. What are these? Hearts. So any kind of heart things. So they're all grouped. And then I've got more fabric. This is lovely fabric. I got most of this from Harrogate. So I've got like new William Morris's and some Christmas fabrics. Lovely, lovely, lovely fabrics. And some more fabrics, just in case I don't have enough. And um, we've got a gem poking his head in. Oi, nosy. More fabric. Love this. Love this. I literally just opened the drawer, you know, I'm so sad. And I just look at it and stroke it and touch it and then shut the drawer again. So there's a lot of Tilda fabrics and then nearly all fat quarters. And then we come to my Ada. So this is all my Ada, which isn't colour coded very well. So I'll probably need to sort that out because I'm a little bit anal about being colour coded, as you can see. So that's my Ada draw. And then down here, I've got my 40 count draw. And 56 that that bloody woman Sarah made me buy. <laughs> so again, colour coded. What's that doing there? <gasps> oh my god. 
What's that in there? Oh, I know why. Because this is Ada at this side. So it is colour coded, but this is spare Ada that I needed to take out of that drawer because it was just getting a bit too full and it was all getting really squished. And on here, in here is some of my vinyl and just things that I've bought randomly from shops to finish. Just some finishing stuff and my dies. My die cuts underneath there. And that, I think, is about your work. So I'll just stand up again. We'll do one more pan of the room. The room of goodness. Oh, and I've forgotten to show you. This is where I've started very gently to organise my fancy floss. So my overdyed threads. And I've got these all in alphabetical order so that I can find things. So if I'm looking for, I don't know, hickory sticks, I can find, I can find where they are. So, and these are all just on different rings. So they're not all on one ring, they're all on different rings. And I need a proper organisation tool for that. I was thinking about getting one of them tie holder things. Let's see how it goes. So that is it. There's our gem. There's all my drawers. And that is it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye. How was it? Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. I love being in here. Well, it depends when I'm not at me work monitor. Um I love being in here, it's my happy place. So just so sherry. It was about three years ago and I was having a gas service done. So this young man, this very handsome young man, came to do my gas service. And he'd done whatever he needed to do with the meters and what have you downstairs. And he says, Where's your boiler? And I says, Oh, it's upstairs. And he went, Oh, okay. And I says, Come on. And he was like, Right. And you know when you think, There's something not right here. So anyway, I climbed up the stairs and I turned around. And I stood, I says, it's in here. I came in the door and I stood around sort of here. And he was standing at the door and I said to him, well, welcome to where the magic happens. And he stood at the door. <laughs> he stood at the door with his hands on the frame. Like, I am not crossing that threshold. That is never going to happen. <laughs> And you know when you think, and he said, your boiler's in there. And I went, oh, I think it's me water heater. That's me boiler's downstairs in the kitchen. He went, yeah, that makes more sense. He ran down the stairs. He ran away from the place where the magic happens. I don't think he was interested in having any magic happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> that poor lad, he probably went home and went, hey, ma'am, I met one of them women that you warned us about today. <laughs> hey, that poor lad, I've probably scored him for life. <laughs> Just, why, <laughs> why I said it, I don't know. I Just, welcome to where the magic happens. <laughs> hey, that poor boy, yeah. He's probably traumatised, he's probably in a very different job now, where it doesn't involve going into houses of strange middle-aged women. <laughs> Poor Ben. So, yeah, that was the Just So Sherry that relates to, to, to my craft room. That will always be a, something I think about and laugh about and, and still be very embarrassed about as well. I feel myself heating up. So that's it. It's weird this because it's not a floss tube. I'm not doing a forward plans or anything like that. Um, I am going to a retreat next weekend. So hopefully the theory is to do a floss tube before I go to the, the retreat. 
So hopefully I will speak to you soon. Until then, take care. Happy holidays. If you can't be nice, don't be anything at all. Stay home. What was that, Sherry? What was that? And you know I can't edit. Yeah, I think I felt a bit lost there, a bit under pressure. Under pressure to, to finish with something wise. Um, and I was thinking about the Bambi. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And that's always a good bit of advice, isn't it? So I will see you in a few days, hopefully. Bye for now.